Welcome back to the 2015 World Championship Finals. SK Telecom T1 still writing their undefeated story as we get into the first game of finals, and they played immaculate that game, mm. falling behind only for a few minutes in the early game. There was some risk in the pick and ban phase we saw from them, the cast and pick mm -hmm. in the mid lane. Obviously, it's a very good matchup into the Lulu, and that's what Faker used so, so effectively. But also Wolf, we didn't talk too much about him on this Shin. He was part of 95% of the kills yeah. SKT had. He was just everywhere on the map. He was joining in whenever they needed him, whenever they set up 2v1s or 3v1s even. And every time you pick cast, and you are picking into an inherent amount of risk because you're leaving yourself a little open to map pressure. But we've also seen the emergence of support Chen specifically for LCK teams and Wolf's ability to kind of feel like he was everywhere at once did a lot to keep Ku Tigers pushed back in the game. And then looking at his scoreline, he really was everywhere that yeah. mattered at the right time. Well, Wolf currently 3-0 on that Shen. Shen now 10-1, so he had a good hand in making a nice record for the Ninja here coming into the tournament, and they used it very well, especially with, as we talk talking about Faker's Kasten, on Ignite. More kill pressure to his lane, but always being in the right spot at the right time when Ku's teleports were up. Yeah, we didn't see him get a kill one versus one, but it's enough to have the threat that, yeah. hey, I can kill you. So Lulu has to sit far back and then catch the wave pretty late, and then Kasten can leave the lane. That's what we saw again and again. Pick and ban phase now, though, Obviously, teams are going to swap. Ku Tigers on blue side. It should mean SKT just want to focus on the standard Gangplank, Mordekaiser, and then probably Elise. Yep. Should set it fairly simple for Ku Tigers. Then, okay, what's the plan? Make sure you don't trade one for two when it comes to the other strong picks like Kalista and Tam Kench and mm -hmm. so on. Well, Ku is one of those teams that knows what happens when you leave GP open, mainly against the Flash yep. Wolves. Wasn't a very good game for them, so I don't think that GP will ever be left open again. And you're right, they're on blue side now, so changes will be made. I think there's a very high chance we see a first pick Tom Kench if it's not mm -hmm. banned away by SKT. It's something they've really wanted to do. Gorilla was pretty much the first person to play the best Tom Kench here yeah. at Worlds. Yeah. Uh, one of the best Tom Kench games was from Gorilla. And yeah, the fact that they haven't banned it speaks pretty highly the chance they're going to first pick it. Also, Wolf showing one of his first plays on Tom Kench against AHQ. That dive under the turret on On was absolutely ridiculous. They're both showing fantastic his, players. Showing the prowess of what he could do as well. So I can't wait to see if Kench does get unbanned. And that's the problem for SKT. Because again, you normally look at Gangplank, Mordekaiser, and Elise as like the three bands well, on. Who banned it? For the yeah, first I'm time. very surprised. Yeah. I would have first picked this, even given a Rek'Sai and just take Lee Sin again. For Hojin, he had a fine performance on this in the early game. If that was going to be the strategy for Ku Tigers, we're expecting Elise to be banned. Yeah, because now this can create the exact same type of Lulu or Rek'Sai choice that SKT opted into in game one. Yeah, now it's now it will be Ku getting the Rek'Sai. And we do have to wonder if SKT is going to go with Lulu. They're so good at it. Normally, exactly oh, wow. the same. It's not in their head, Jap. I I dislike the fact that Ku Tigers did the Tom Kench here. However, if they leave Tom Kench, they get one. SKT gets two. At this point, when you're trading these bands, uh, it can get a little bit dicey. That's right. I mean, if I was Ku Tigers, I would have banned Lulu as my last ban instead, Absolutely. and then looked at SKT and said, okay, if you want to ban Elise, we take Tom Kench, we get Rek'Sai. That's an okay trade. Obviously, it meant SKT could possibly leave both junglers open. It was like Tom Kench for Elise. Which I think is fine. Which I still think you could have done if you are the Ku Tigers, or at least you get the Elise pick then for Hojin, his best early game jungler. So, a little bit surprised about it from the Ku Tigers. We're SKT will now be able to do the same kind of comp protect the AD yeah. carry if they want to. You're looking at an undefeated Elise on both sides. Six plays in for Bangi, five in for Hojin. So nobody wants to leave that up on either side and get the spider in the game. Fiora will be Back. picked up by Smeb in the top lane. We usually see Marin taking that out of the rift, but Kuro has had a few chances as well. Yeah, well, especially after he played it all four games against KT, continue yep. to have good performances with it against Fnatic. It was a little bit strange that it wasn't picked nor banned in the first game. So Ku Tigers kind of going back to that Fiora yeah. well, hoping yeah. that Smeb can carry the game. I think the reason Ku Tigers didn't want to play last game, obviously Rumble was picked, they wanted the Riven matchup into it, but also because Shin was in the game on the side of SK Telecom. So it was it was going to be very difficult to beat that split pusher. Riven can go in and flank a team fight and kind of burst down one target more, and have some AoE at least, where the Fiora does not, very single target focused. Now, because Alistar goes in as the second support, when once Tom Kench is gone, people go Alistar very often. Right. Shin was available for Ku Tigers. They could run the Fiora. They will have this insane split push now with Smep and double global for both jungle pick and support pick. Ku Tigers should be able to set up a very good split pushing scenario here for Smep. As KT throwing together a little AoE in their composition with Rumble again for Marin. Yeah. Bang! We'll pick up Jarvan for Bengi in the jungle. Well, this I think will be extremely interesting. 
Marin was free to pick the Rumble into Smebs Fiora last game, and then who opted for a different matchup. Yeah. I think Marin is very confident in Rumble against Fiora. We've been waiting for people to kind of find the right Fiora counterpick. Was it Darius? Well, no, that kind of fell apart. It was Renekton in some games, unless you built in an extremely proper way and had your whole team helping you. Now I think we're going to get to see the best kind of anti-Fiora yeah. matchup possible. We thought maybe it would be Lissandra. We were hoping at least. Big picks, but maybe it's going to be the Rumble. We're going to have to see how this matchup plays out. At least Rumble can be very difficult to dive in the early game. Often what happens if you're losing the lane, you get pushed into a tower, jungler yeah. shows up. Rumble ulti and his tankiness Love. makes it difficult at least to kill him. What are we looking at here? Support Shen, top view. Ada carry Shen. Carry Cannon. Oh, sorry, Ada carry Cannon. Ada <laughs> carry Shen. You had the ninja. Ada <laughs> carry Cannon. <laughs> No, I, I love this. This is pretty much comfort zone for everyone on Ku, yeah. except you could say Prey because he hasn't competitively played Ken and AD carry. Mm -hmm. uh, but specifically, when they were preparing for Fnatic, he prepared this as a pick to go against Reckless, who was playing so much AD Cannon in case they'd have to take it away. Yeah. Uh, so he's very practiced on this AD Cannon at this point. And Cannon is very good into a lot of these hyper carries because, first of all, he has a fine laning pace against them. Once he gets a Cutlass and the Blade of the Ruin King, he's very strong one versus one. So this AD carry cannot sit on his own in the side lane and risk taking a duel with the cannon. They can try and farm out. That's why Tristan also comes in here for Bang. It's one of the safer AD carries at sitting and farming up in the side lane. But really, Ku Tigers are building for a 1 3 1 setup. Insane split push coming from Smep with Rek'Sai and Shen joining him. Wave clear in the mid lane from the Victor. Very standard Ku Tigers composition from what we've seen here at Worlds. And SKT obviously saying, well, Let's go team fight. Hard engage Java, and we're gonna take the fights. In this case, I do like the amount of AOE damage and crowd control the Koo can put together, because typically teams that have Lulu in the mid lane do tend to group up in fairly small balls of, of people. So therefore, yeah. the AOE from Koo Tigers will be able to hit SKT a little bit harder. It'll be very interesting, though, to see how this mid lane matchup goes, because both guys have opted into Ignite. Yeah, we, we're gonna fight in this mid lane here. Koro's saying, I you sure know what? So. My teleport didn't work last time. I'm gonna try now and do all this Lulu. If I can push in Faker, suddenly he can be the guy roaming and assisting the lanes like Faker did in the last game. It's been a quiet mid lane for this Worlds tournament. Usually you hear the top laners are on an island, but the mid laners have been very soft in their back and forth. It's a few times for Faker, a few other solos throughout the tournament, but more than not, like we said, Faker, Faker, not really a playmaker this time. It's more about the rest of the team. We'll see if that turns tides here with Ignite in the mid lane. Keep updating your Twitter votes throughout this series. Send that hashtag KOOWIN or hashtag SKTWIN to at LOL Esports, and we can see how you are calling this as we get on to the Rift. Game two of this best of five here in Berlin at the World Championship Finals. SKT two games away, two wins away, I should say, from the Summoner's Cup, hoisting it once again. It will be the only team to have those two wins at Worlds. There were no huge surprises in game one, aside from the fact that SKT played around Cassidy incredibly well. Who Tigers wasn't really able to do anything with the minor advantages they had gained in the early game. Because remember, first game, SKT played a very defensive early game strategy, did not get any deep wards, and were vulnerable to a little bit of a Ku Tigers counter invade later into the game, where they outnumbered the number of jungle camps uh, that SKT could take and gained a very early experience advantage. Ku does need to jump on SKT early because they were able to do it in game one. And Origin last week was supposed to be the guys who could maybe create an upset, take a game against SK Telecom. They did really well in game one. Ku Tigers had a good early game at least, but then we saw it fall apart. I wonder when you face a team like SK Telecom and you're mentally trying to be so ready and say, this way I'm gonna play the best game of my life. I'm gonna take down SKT, I'm gonna take down Faker, take the trophy, run away with it. He's not gonna get his hands on it. And then you lose that first game. It is so hard to then rebound into game two because like you just had everything invested into one game. It didn't work for you. Origin, I feel like had the same problem. We're gonna have to see if, if Ku Tigers can show so up in game fast. two. That's the thing about SKT is you can take them down in every if facet, like but if you haven't chipped away at their mentality, they are still very much so in the game. Yeah, and we've been talking a lot about like what will it take for SKT to lose a game? Because SKT is so fluid and reactive, yep. and we got to talking, we're saying like, oh, SKT, they just do things by the book. But then the question is like, what book? What book are you doing that tells you how to play this perfect League of Legends? Because what they're able to do is make the right play across the board, which is so fascinating and so difficult to do in League of Legends because you are five individuals trying to play as one. And that's really what makes SK Telecom so far this year at Worlds, is their ability to play as an absolute team. Yeah, and that's really the scary thing. A team with so many carry players, insane mechanics, top lane, 80 carry, 
mid lane as well. And when you then add in what I feel is the best shot calling we see from a team in League of Legends, and really the main thing for SK Telecom, how quick they can make these decisions, reading, okay, Mini Wave is pushing one lane, so we need to defend there, move down, and then keep always rotating around. Right, and Wolf successfully pushes them off of Uma, which is, again, kind of a smart play. And do they see a big opportunity? Because normally Ku should funnel to Raptors. Now Marin's there. Marin charging the Flamesfitter. He came in with his gauge over half. Oh, and right from level one turret die. Bangy definitely messed that up. Can they get snapped? Marin's going to go down here too. SKT go way too hard in the early game. This, this is what they call the caster curse. You talk about it. Play by the book, Jan. Play it by the book. Capitalize on opponent missteps. Never overstep your bounds. I was just going to say SKT has been the perfect low risk, medium reward team. But by double flashing into the turret at two and a half minutes, that was a high risk, low to medium reward play. SKT completely out of character. And Koo Tigers get two kills in the early game. They were in such a good position. Just push these guys out of the jungle, force them to recall. You're now way ahead in the lane swap. Go up, take your tower. Marin now, now it snowballs because they do not die. have the support from the others. This is exactly what we didn't see last game. These turrets were being pushed by only members of the opposite Bengi's team. Two now. now SKT tries to defend that turret. The and they cost them their life. Two lives to go down. Now Benki just cool came downs. back from being dead. It's going to be a real long walk to get back into his jungle. Great turret aggro trading. And that's Gorilla coming in for the final kill. One last shot. He's still alive. Oh. It's a third oh. shot that will take him down. He gets caught up in his own minions. Even so, things have gone from bad to worse, and that is the <laughs> collateral damage or just the extended loss of what SKT did in the jungle of Ku Tigers. They completely fell apart for about a minute <laughs> and a half. Let's see if they can recover. If Ku Tigers didn't feel confident going into game two, they do now. Four kills, four minutes in, and such a greedy play just from SKT, sending Marin down with no flash to sit in this bottom lane. Yeah. Bingy didn't go anywhere on the map. Either he had to go top and dive Smep like we saw Hojin do right here, or he had to just try and farm it up. But that would mean his top laner could die. Going down to defend him this late would never really do anything. And Ku Tigers just a step ahead of SKT, punish him in this lane top completely. Smep is level 3, 16 CS. He's going to be more than fine now. Yeah, and maybe if SKT could have had both Bengi and Marin under the turret at the same time. Yes. But even that's a little bit dangerous because they're both down flashes from the earlier play. Really just a series of errors by SKT that were capitalized on by Ku by doing that turret dive. Now the question will be, where does Ku go from here? Because they haven't been able to push their advantages extremely well, except in the group stages, actually, yeah. when they're able to do it against CLG repetitively. Well, already an uncharacteristic game for Ku here. Who Usually we say Hojin sits back, waits for the counter. They were so proactive in those engages. I don't think they're going to be stopping anytime soon, but definitely need to focus it. Hojin giving the kills to his lanes now. He's 2-0-2, doesn't need too much more as an early game jungler. We'll see if he can help the other uh, members get going on the team. Gorilla heading back down towards the bottom lane. They're looking to make some plays, trade that damage. They know these little upper hands in the lane are really going nice to done. go far throughout the game. Wolf, level two, his flash is still down. He's going to be forced to just do some triumphant roars if he's even leveled it here. Two Tigers keep playing around. The lanes where SKT has no flashes from that level one. Right. Marin still missing his flash. Wolf, of course, missing his flash. So they knew, okay, they're overextending on the bottom side make a play because right now Smep is just sitting on his own on top lane. He's getting solo experience. He's more than fine again. And this would actually be the book that you play by <laughs> if you're Ku Tigers. You see a small hole in the opponent armor. You hit it again and again and again until those flashes are up again. They're completely happy with Smep farming and they know if they continue to hit, S hit SKT's weak spot, SKT will continue to send defenses down there, which means they won't be stopping Smeb on the other side either. So things going very well for Ku Tigers. Assistance ping called in by Hojin here. Looks like they want to make a move in towards the jungle. Wolf Spirit did move, but Faker, I don't think, caught that. He'll still be safe to get out of this. But this is the first action we've seen towards mid lane. Faker and Kuro are probably like, what is going on around us right now? <laughs> well, Faker is happy in the lane so far. He's winning quite easily. I didn't see if Kuro had to leave the mid lane, maybe to try and rush down and be part of this tower dive, even though he never got any assist, so he's not really been able to add any value there. But it does obviously mess a little bit with you as a player. You suddenly have to leave at level one to join a weird fight behind you. It can set you behind. I think that's what happened in this mid lane. It is yeah. still fairly even. Even though I actually think it was Faker that pushed up a little bit into the turret as well, so maybe a few CS lost early by Kuro. Uh, I will say, though, 
Kuro, even when they're in large deficits, has always been able to have massive impact in team fights on Victor. I think it's really exciting to see how he can deal against Faker's Lulu, who's very high pressure mid laner, trying to roam. And Victor's, I think, a pretty good pick against that because he can counter shove the lane very easily after Lulu does that and kind of match the roams. And as you mentioned earlier yourself, when you're against the Lulu, you don't want too much single target damage because she's going to shield that guy, block him up with ulti. You want massive AoE. Victor yeah. will offer that. Smep, nice little play here, can repost the damage coming in from Bang. And in that melee, Kuro knows exactly what he's doing. 8-2 and two over the summer split with an 8.5 KDA on Victor. Victor was his pick. Yes. He brought it into the meta and the start of the spring split. And then everyone was like, oh, Victor, he's extremely this. strong. Let's <laughs> all start playing him, and we still play him half a year later. We'll see what he can continue to do. Like we said, no, not much action to the mid lane. Everybody else getting themselves going. Hojin still 2-0-2 two, two, as things have kind of slowed down. A little breather for both teams as they get full three levels under the turret. They have all the skills to get out or get in if necessary. Hojin, Ku actually got some nice deep wards that have already been cleared out so far. So we'll see if they can get themselves back into that jungle and ward it up. I would have liked to see SKT say, you know what, guys, we've been losing now this one-on-one -on -one between Obviously, the top laner's order, AD carry versus the top laner. And our own top laner, the Rumble, is sitting and having to share experience with our support. He so he's stuff. really far behind. It's going to be a tough dive for Binky. Yeah, sub-level 6, Jarvan. Repost will be up very shortly for Smeb, but they're going anyways. Goes back towards the turret, trying to keep himself in between the wall. That's the flash out. Can't get the grand challenge on to Bang. Smeb will not go down from that, I don't think. Should stay alive. He has just a sliver oh, of health. Hit. This has to be going back. Oh! He misses the strike, but he does get the auto as Smeb flashes in range, unfortunately. There, it, those are some fast fingers you got to play to get out of that situation. I think SKT had it either way. Flash for flash, though, as the kill goes down. SKT clearly said, okay, bang, keep pushing the lane. You might be able to get a tower. Then we will swap the lanes back. Rumble should right. recall from this bottom side once Tristana appears in the lane. Get him into that one on one against Vero so he gets some experience. But I feel it's almost too late for Marin. He's falling almost too far behind in experience. It's very important they got that one kill at least. That was all they were keeping Bang for. To keep pushing in the lane, try and get the tower. He didn't get it though, no. because they took the kill instead. Smeb has been doing a very nice job on Bang, getting that damage down, pushing him off the ways, not allowing it to always be at the turret. Definitely saved his life for a little bit longer than necessary there. We did see him go down, blow his flash, but he is coming back with a TMS. So that's only going to get easier for him to farm that lane out and be somewhere else for his team when necessary. Absolutely, and Smeb with the two deaths as well. It's it's actually not too out of character for what he has been doing right. so far at Worlds. He he actually has given up more first bloods than any other player at Worlds. Uh, so he does die early in lane somewhat frequently with the aggressiveness in which he plays. That time, he had been poked down pretty low by Tristana. He thought he could outplay the dive. He has a lot of confidence in his ability to outplay because more often than not, especially in team fights, he does. But this time it cost him. Good play though from SKT in the end. Kind of saving Marin here. He was falling really far behind in experience early on. Full level is a lot when it comes to these 1v1s, especially when one of them is a Fiora who needs to get punished in the early game, otherwise she will outscale you. Going in on Marin now. He has flash ready. Marin throws down the equalizer. That does not look like a good situation for him, though. Very oh, nice Carl. from the wall. He's got full vision here, but he doesn't have vision behind Baron. Instantly lasered down by Kuro, and his victor just gets a kill. He just walked up lane and got it. Faker's still farming there, and he's not going to lose any minions as he comes back. Wow, and a small interaction there. Wolf actually gives Gorilla a gift because the Shenault was coming in, but Wolf interrupted him, so now they get to keep the 2v2 as well. They get the global presence from the Shen wow. shield during their dive, and they don't lose the map pressure for it either. Same thing as we saw in the last game against the Lulu. You push her into this tower, she sticks, she stays there, she tries to farm it up, push it back, and then you roam to the other lanes. Pinky, gonna find Smep now. There's ulti on this Jarvan, so he can lock him down at least. A lot of love from Beggy on this med lane. Cataclysm down. Flame Spitter should be able to take Smeb out quite quickly. There's Hojin oh, with a kill though. Smeb. He makes it. Grand Challenge is down, so this is all about Smeb's abilities. Flame Spitter finishes him off, but Marin is overheated as he makes his way out now with the Scrap Shield. He should be okay. This is Kuro's second roam. That means his mid is open, but it pays off with kill number two. Kuro has been out roaming Faker this game, and Smeb comes up huge with that play. But everything happens up top, means time to fight down bottom. Once SKT sees an opening, they take it. That's Unbreakable Will on. Slicing Maelstrom's gonna put a bit of crowd control. They need to stop Bang from dishing out the DPS. But it looks like they won that trade nicely.
they'll be able to sit back in lane as Wolf tries to heal it up. SKT with their bottom lane here picked against the cannon, saying we have a headbutt, we have buster shot, we have so many ways of shooting you away from us when you pop that ulti. So it's going to be hard for Prey to kill this lane, but he's not here to kill the lane. He's right. here just to support the rest of the team in the fight, because right now, you have two kills on your top laner. He's been getting solo experience, and you just ganked the lane and got more kills for him. Yeah, and I think this is another time to call attention to the itemization timings. Yep. Last game, Bangi was at 16 minutes before he completed Sidestorm. He had a Cinder Hulk, which gave him very good combat effectiveness. This time, Bengi has an early Sightstone, less combat effectiveness when he goes up to try and kill Smeb, weakens him enough for Smeb to be able to kill him, and is one of the major reasons Ku ended up winning that trade. Yeah. Because SKT's been on the back foot, they're warding more, but it means Bengi can't actually take fights. Oh, he knocks him up inside the gravity field. Flag and drag and over the, the wall. Not much they can follow there. The flash is already down for Kuro. Does he want it? That gives him the speed! And he gets the last auto in for the third kill of the game. Everything is going wrong for SKT right now. This is a play we normally don't see. Bengi walks into the enemy jungle to place a ward when his own mid lane is back in base. Faker wasn't even nearby, so he was all alone. Gets caught out. Faker now wants to kill Kuro. Oh, what a turn. Faker pressuring Kuro here. Flashes in, gets the kill. Looks like there was a little of bot lane as well, but they turned off of that. Faker getting it right back for himself. I feel like Faker just completely turned this game because it looked like Ku was making play after play and never breaking the momentum. The three-man gank that they were prepping bottom lane, I think absolutely could have worked, but yeah. the instant Faker kills Curl there, the entire team pulls off the gank. Alistair Ultimate was still down, so they could have been able to focus him. Uh, at that point, Faker turns the kill around, gets the shutdown on Curl, knows that Curl used a lot of his summer spells and power to get the kill on Bangi, and it's the right time to go aggressive. It's top lane, man. Smeb is just getting further and further ahead. And he's the one with the lead now. Remember, SKT decided to put Marin down to the bottom lane. They decided to keep him there with the Alistar for such a long time, sharing experience. Replay from before. This is where it goes, you know, away from their by the book place, because these are the kind of outplays a team like SKT can make. This when is the choose your own adventure. Page. Right. When everything looks terrible, they're making some mistakes, they get one of these solo plays. Top lane might see a dive though. I think they saw a little bit too much behind Marin to really keep wanting that. Hojin in a bad, bad spot, and it looks like the team is going to leave him out to dry. That is not going to be good. Ku had that lead, and it is being squeezed smaller and smaller by SKT's moves. Bang and Wolf were there when Ku did not expect them to be there, yes. so that was just catching them off guard and in a bad timing right here. Kuro able to get the blue, which is actually pretty clutch, and this could end up being a trade of turrets. Should do. This tower is so low on the top side, we know Prey can't join. Same with Faker, though, he's also on the bottom yeah, lane. Yeah, Kuro has moved to defend, so they're actually trying to save this turret as best as possible, and they've pushed SKT off of it. Teleport's going to be up for Marin, but his ultimate is following very oh, that's slowly play. on that one. Ojin onto Bang. Bang jumps nicely over the wall, makes it to safety. Wolf's gonna headbutt himself a little bit further towards the turret. Looks like they could be safe here. That teleport's there for Marn, but he's gonna stay. The team calls safe. No problems from Ku here, as Ku again attempt to get themselves even farther ahead. Yeah, well, they definitely repelled the pressure that was on their turret. Then they let it die to yes. minions because they were too aggressive there. So really unfortunate move there for Ku. Uh, but I really love the way Bang counterplayed that gank. He doesn't want to try and rocket jump over the Rek'Sai because the Rek'Sai will unburrow and interrupt the jump. So he was very patient with the way he used that to jump around. Marin takes a short cut, but it's not a good one. Oh, Hojin over the wall. It's not even going to be necessary. He does get the assist, though, in the end. And that is going to be Kuro, 4, 1, and 0 now. Another really sloppy mistake here from SKT. Two tires were just fighting on the top side of the map to walk into your jungle, and you didn't just walk straight through the mid lane and not really sure how Marin got caught out of position in the first place by moving up there. Ends up dying. Kuro's four kills now on this victor. He's yeah. going to be so keen to late game fights. And this is the worst I've seen Marin play in worlds. Early game, he flashes under the turret to try and get like a refund kill when it's definitely going to be his death. And then again here in the mid lane with the fifth death. Slicing Maelstrom. They are going to call in the TP. Smabs in. Is that a fight that they can take here? All Unbreakable Will is down, so it's definitely an option to go for Wolf. Marn's going to join the fight, and he lays down the red carpet for Smab to enter, and it looks like Smab will go down as he hits the front door. Somehow, Wolf stays alive. In the end, it's Ku Tigers investing a teleport to try and create a play where, honestly, they just want to have this one versus one in top lane. They don't need to try and join him for these fights. Just let Smeb do his job on his own.
because then SKT has to send up multiple guys to help Marin kill Smep, and that's where you get your openings. Yeah, I agree, but when you're in a position to take down SK Telecom, what type of decisions will you make? Here, who does see a window? Because SKT burns a Lulu wall and an exhaust on a prey early on, which means Smeb thinks he's free to go in, but the matching teleport way in the back has Smeb tunnel. He's out of mana by the time he goes in, so he can't dash to proc the last vital. Oh. I like the idea of putting the vitals on the Alistair because you're doing percent health true damage yes. every time you proc the vital. Therefore, you can take down Alistair in an unbreakable will, but he was not respecting the teleport and absolutely should have disengaged. Yeah, and that was the weird okay. thing, not respecting the TP, and he was recalling top lane. He was like, okay, back to base, got a lot of gold probably. And then he's like, oh, I have to react now, try and help my AD carry down on the bottom side. Those kind of plays can cost Ku Tigers a lot, because now obviously setting up that split push is going to be more difficult with no flash for Fiora and no teleport for her. Might slow down the game a little bit for SKT, give them more chance to farm again. You still don't have really anything completed for your AD carry. Faker has been doing well in the mid lane, but he's obviously not going to be the main damage dealer on your team. It looks like SKT still wants to make plays. Early distortion mobility for Wolf so he can get the flash pulverizes in to start things off. He does have that wild growth we just saw. Save his life if Unbreakable Will is down. A lot of options to go in. It's like Wolf and Bangy are going to be Bash Brothers here starting off these fights once they get the chance. Yeah, typically though, because of the gold deficit, we have to see a much craftier SKT. They can't just make the brute force outnumber plays that they could last game when they had big advantages. Here, they have to be very creative, make Ku overcommit, and play from behind, which is what SKT has been able to do very well in the past, but they are in a much different position than in game one. And Kuro really wants to have an impact right now, or keep his impact going, because he's obviously had a great start to the game. Morel and Omicron, it means you can go for your magic penetration boots, so your mid-game damage is very, very high on the Victor. Obviously, delays your late-game items a little bit, but he wants to fight at the moment. He wants to be able to one-shot someone from SKT. I think that something that is very strange about this game is that we're 19 minutes in and the first dragon has not been taken. Uh, Ku Tigers has had what should be pretty good map control, but they have consistently been prepping turret dives and going for kills instead of securing the objective per se. Uh, even with the global pressure of the Rek'Sai and the Shen, you'd think they would have gone for that already. But if we do see a big fight here, it would be around the Dragon Fit because that's what SKT is trying to draw in here with the mid-game Lulu Trist. This is super dangerous to Fischio. This is so risky for SKT. There's two items already on Prey. He's joining in as well. If there's a fight, Ku Tiger should be able to win it. Oh, Gorilla was coming down like he wanted that fight. Just gonna take mid tower yeah, instead. Push mid. Yeah, this is the counterplay right now. SKT may sacrifice mid lane, but if they can trade bottom turret for mid turret and get the dragon, it's a giant win for them right now. They're keeping bang bottom, and as long as they can defend team tier two, this is a huge win for SKT. Smeb wanted to stay top lane and push it out, but again, he had no teleport. It was used in that fight earlier where he ends up dying, so he couldn't join in in time. They're pushing the tower. Because they see the Trist bottom, they wanted to push the inner middle turret right there. But you can really see that with the Lulu and the Rumble there, yeah. the turret push just isn't happening. Now Ku is trying to get deeper vision within the SKT jungle. But as you can see, SKT's really contesting almost everything. This is where they're hoping Ku makes a mistake. A lot of damage onto Smab, but very nice parry on the flag and drag. And I don't know if they're going to be able to get the damage they want. Gorilla goes in the middle of the fight with a nice flash in the and back, toe. Though. Gorilla goes down. Here comes Kuro. Throws down the Chaos Storm. It's all over Wolf, though. Oh, nice flash Faker's over fight. the wall from Faker. And he glitter lances over the Krugs and gets away so he does not take too much damage. Somehow, every member of SKT is alive, but Ku is still on the chase. Marin dodging out the damage of the laser means there's not much follow-up to be had. And this whole time, Bang is pushing the bottom tier turret. This is SKT winning all across the map. The SKT saw Ku Tiger split up and said, let's put down the Rumble ulti, let's try and lock down Fiora in the Rumble ulti. No flash for Smep to get out of it. That's how SKT starts the fight. And pray he left the bottom side to run all the way to top lane, try and join, didn't manage to, ends up losing another tower. This is the craftiness that we were talking about with SKT. And one of the most underrated parts of Rumble Ultimate is the range in which you can use it. Look where Marin is right here. When he decides to cut them off with Equalizer, he landed the second half and he completely cuts off the funnel. So when Bengi comes over the top, he does lock them within the Equalizer, not to mention the split up right there. And it's miraculous of SKT to have everyone survive throughout that fight. Fantastic plays all around. They're able to take down Wolf here. This will help them get towards the turrets a little bit more, but you still have Baker, you still have Marin to clear the waves. 
What play from both teams so far? 10 to 9, still a slight gold lead by 1,000 in favor of Koo, and it's not something, like we said, SKT has worked with very much being down. They're usually the team up by at least two to 3,000 at this point. Yeah, and that's why, again, it's so impressive how they can use every single advantage they find. Oh, okay, you just invested all your summoners as a top laner. We know we can engage on you now that it's an opening. We know there's no split pushing pressure because TP is down. So, like, it bought a lot of time for SKT to make some plays as a team, group together as five, out to rotate the Koo Tigers and then pick the right team fights as well. Really well played, and Koo Tigers are learning, okay, we cannot split up like this. We have to stay together because the engage from the Java and the hard engage option he brings is too high for us to split up because we have so many squishy members. I mean, the only real tank on this team is going to be Hojin sitting in the front. Shen is not going to be tanking up as a support no. to really stay in the front line. I think it's going to be a huge balance, though, because Smeb needs to be able to split push, and they need to be able to disengage some of these team fights. That's the whole reason he's picking the Fjord, but SKT brings some friends. Grand challenge in, can knock it. the no. last hit. Gorilla way too deep here. You stand united to get on Smeb, but Smeb turned from the fight immediately. He's trying to get the hits on a bang. That's going to be the explosive shot, taking him down. Bang knew he could get the kill easily. SKT working well within their champion's capabilities here. You said to yourself here before, Jad, SKT, or Koo Tigers, sorry, have to be able to split push. They had used another teleport from Smeb to get one kill on Wolf yeah. in the mid lane. So once again, that global is gone. They're not using this Fiora at all. Keep burning the teleports for absolutely nothing. This one obviously was just bang. Returning to the bot side, really, really smart decision from him. Ends up getting a 2 for 0 trade. And the trouble here for Koo is it's also so hard for Smeb to exist well in team fights. Lulu Polymorph, also slow and somewhat reliable damage from SKT, does not get parried well. One of the biggest things about Smeb in their semifinal against Fnatic is he was parrying or riposting giant CCs, Skarner ultimate. Riven stuns, huge bursts of damage, but that isn't the way SKT's composition is built. It's sustained damage over time and good crowd control. So really, Smeb needs to be smarter about these split pushes because SKT is consistently outwitting him. He can win the 1v1 against Rubble, but he's overcommitted. We've also seen it's very hard for Smeb to hit all of the vitals with the amount of pop-ups. The flag and drag Bengi used twice in the last fight to stay away from those vitals and give Smeb his HP back on Grand Challenge. A lot of things work against two Tigers yeah. in these fights. One of the reasons Lulu has been seen as one of these really, really power picks in this meta is because she works so well against all these top lane carries. Like, oh, you want to single down one guy with your Fiora ulti? He has everything invested from Lulu to save that guy. Whimsy yep. comes in against like Darius, you can just kite him for days. She works extremely well against all the top lane carries. So SKT were happy enough taking that in that rotation. Where Koo Tiger said that apparently they were fine giving more of a protect AD carry comp to SKT. And I still think it, it was okay for Koo. They just haven't been able to, once again to use their lead properly. They keep making these small mistakes on the map. How they want to use the globals. When do they want to assert pressure on one side? And that's what SKT is punishing every single time. SKT working very well proactively throughout the tournament, always waiting for a team to make mistakes. Marin's going to have to respect this to push towards the top side, but they're calling up Bang as well. This actually may be a fight. Smeb pushed up very far here, but he does have some friends in the river that could head up. Very creative what they're doing right here. They're keeping Lulu as the, the wave pusher. They're actually not playing three lanes right here like they usually do because they are consistently trying to lay traps for Smeb, hoping he goes for kills on Marin, and then turning. How often do you see an AD carry waiting for a counter game? Second time for SKT. Smeb lunge to get away. Looks like it will be enough of the distance to get out of any danger. That dragon is alive, though. We've only seen one on the map now. 26 minutes in could be dragon number two. It's both teams kind of hold hands as they make their way down the river get that vision. If SKT starts the dragon instantly, if they know the exact time of teleport, they will get a 5 versus 4, but then they will lose top towers. I think it's better to send Marin back to this tower, push out the wave, and then look for Koo Tigers to make a move before you decide to do anything. That's exactly what they're doing now. Just don't early TP down and like just 5-man the dragon. Wait to see the play happening, and this is what's going to happen for Koo Tigers. <laughs> 
Really good Zonia's. This drill that'll pierce the heavens. Can Marin do it? A 4v1 situation. It looks like he will go down as all five members of Ku are towards the top side. That's going to mean Dragon, and they don't really have a wave to get a push on. That was a very greedy play by Marin to be under the turret. But at the same time, SKT is going to try and make that work with committing the four-man dive. What will SKT get out of that? They actually defended the turret, traded his life for the Dragon, and a mid-inner. This is one of the reasons SKT wants to play Rumble against teams who can split push against him because on the turret, he can do so much damage before he goes down. He always builds Hourglass early as well, which delays him going down. So even with it was greedy for Martin to get under that tower, it bought enough time for SKT to take two objectives, a tower and of course the Dragon here. So really, really well played from SKT. But also Ku Tigers investing everything to try and get one kill. You always know if it takes too long to do something, it's not worth. That's what the Zanya is helping to promote for SKT here as they're getting pushed back ever so slowly. But in their pushes, or in, I should say, Ku's pushes, SKT is able to get more around the map than what Ku is getting out of the champions of SKT. 11 to 11 in kills. The gold is pretty much tied up here. Just a small lead and what would be probably minions in the lane over to SKT. They have two dragons in their favor, and they haven't let Ku get very many throughout game one or game two. A lot of control on the map for SKT. Yeah, and SKT with the Rumble and the Lulu kind of have a double AP composition working, but there's still no Aegis on the side of the two Tigers. Uh, and they're not even close to one either, so this is a little bit troubling for Ku since their split yep. pushing has been getting counter ganked by AD carries and their team fighting uh, isn't necessarily itemized for, whereas the power spikes are hitting for SKT with the death cap on the Lulu and the last whisper onto Bang. You do have your Shen ulti very soon. You have teleport for Smep, so he needs to sit on the bottom side and the four members from Ku Tigers has to take over the Baron. They need to control it because then you get two openings. Either one, you get the one-on-one -on -one bot lane with the Shen ulti and your 2v1 kill obviously on to Marin when he's sitting on the tower. Or if they try to make a play, you just go and towards and force the Baron like this. A lot of miscommunication in that engage. Bang uses both summoners to get himself out with wild growth. Gorilla's the focus now on the other side. Prey, he branches off from the team and here comes Marin on the TP. Zanyas is down, but he's going to get gravity fielded. No, he wasted enough time inside that he didn't. But Ku is able to assess the fight very well. Get themselves back in after choosing the right target. Bangy, flag, and drag away. Doesn't look like Ku has any more priority targets. They lose two, however, in that fight from splitting up so much in the beginning. Marin teleported in a good two or three seconds before Smeb made his presence known in that team fight. And that's the reason that SKT ends up getting a two for one. Because a fight in which Bang gets caught at the beginning should almost never lead to an SKT. SKT two for one, exactly. but they do lose the turret afterwards because some nice damage was returned by Ku Tigers. Really interesting chain of events. Wolf goes in, Bang shooting somebody else. They still get out alive. However, they can turn situations around so fast to be in their favor and make it work. Still just repairing the lanes now because that wasn't the best of situations they came out of. Coming up on 30 minutes here. These games are definitely going longer than SKT's average, so they have to put a little more effort in to this mid-game area, where, as we say, Ku should be shining. Sadly for Ku Tigers, Smep had to use ulti, oh sorry, teleport, yeah. again. So now he's no longer on the bottom side. You can no longer make that Fiora Shen play very easily, because you won't, you will lose all your pressure on Baron, as he can then start it. So the whole setup for Ku Tigers with having that 1v1 just keeps getting delayed again and again and again. And Smep really has been struggling to do a whole lot with that early lead he got because he's constantly being put into team fights. So much of split pushing is about forcing the enemy team into decisions. And half the reason it works is because it's so difficult to coordinate everyone to do exactly the right thing and find the openings. But SKT has been the best team at Worlds this year, as well as having some of the best players. And I think that teamwork is one of the things that's stopping the split push from being so effective, aside from Smev being a little bit slow on the uptake in some of his plays. And we can't really blame Ku Tigers for, for looking at that last fight and saying, oh, we can catch the AD carry, we should go for it. But normally that's not what they wanted to do. They wanted to just have control of the Baron River and wait for Smev to make a play one versus one against Marin. They were going to wait for him because yeah. he was supposed to be the strong member here, the guy who can win his lane consistently, where every time there's a team fight, it's more 50-50 between the teams here. So their safe play was going to be Smev making a move with Shen ulti. That didn't happen because obviously they saw Bang a little bit out of position, they went for it, but that was basically what SKT wanted. Because now we have this situation again where two top laners are holding each other. It's very difficult for Putin to make that play because they have no TP. So the, how do they capitalize? It's going to be very difficult, especially with Faker having home guard and Whimsy to get himself back out to the lanes. Instantly Glitterlanding, pushing any of Ku's work back while he was in base. 
and already down mid lane. It's not going to be Smeb diving Marin under his turret, so Smeb starts to back off, and Faker was making a roam down. But the movement of Smeb says, I'm in a ward, let's not go for that. Still focused to the mid lane. One minute on to Dragon, both teams trying to just pull ultimates, pull flashes or summoner spells out of each other here before it happens. We're absolutely seeing a game of back and forth right here. Anytime someone leaves to go and push a side lane, you're going to see a small window of pressure for the opponent. And anytime SKT shows That's people big. in the mid lane, Smeb will try and go aggressively end up getting the equalizer out there yeah. for very low cost. 97 second cooldown on the equalizer from Marin. That's one of the reasons Rumble is sitting and holding a lane so it can be a bit annoying for him if you have to use ulti yeah. due to the long cooldown. This does give an opening for Kutai. You can see how they're instantly moving in now. Sit around Baron and say, we want to fight now because you have no ulti on your Rumble. With the distortion enchant for Marin, he has a faster teleport cooldown for Smeb. So even though they used it on the same fight, Marin's teleport's actually up in a couple of seconds right here. And that makes it much less safe for Ku to actually be faking this Baron. Something we saw him focus in game one. Marin is definitely a huge playmaker on this Rumble. We saw him come from a, uh, a screen off. Engage oh in one of the bottom fights. Who's going to start? There's no vision here for SKT. If SKT goes in, it can actually be a 5v4. Yeah, this is too risky. To I don't think Koku knows the teleport's up. Now they do. Marin is going to be coming in. They will not be able to turn and fight this with the damage of Baron in their favor. They just back off completely. Here's the big window, though, because this time they forced the teleport without forcing the teleport on the other side. So that's a big win for yes. Ku, actually. Not over committing to the Baron and getting this split push turret. Huge move. The key thing for Ku Tigers was the fact that Faker had recalled. He was back in base. One other member didn't get to see who was also running from the fountain. So SKT, even though they had five members, they couldn't hot engage. They're going back again. They're going back. They have the pink ward, but they do not clear the one in the back of the pit. They are trying to run SKT around yes. the map. And soon, Smeb will have his teleport, but he's drawn Marin up right here. So it's the Rek'Sai, Shen, and the teleport advantage all working in conjunction with the Dragon and Baron being up at once. This is filled with action right Definitely now. Definitely by-the-book teleport play, if you will, gentlemen. This would be perfect for Ku to get a giant fight if SKT bunches up in this one. Marin, or Smeb rather, keeping an eye on the team. Sm Marin already had to go back but the teleport discrepancy actually will not be worked just yet by Ku. We have Hojin going back, but he can ult back in. And if you're SKT, you have to break this cycle somehow by making an aggressive play or killing one leg of the split push, but at the moment, Ku isn't letting them recover. If anything, this leads to a cataclysmic fight at the Baron Pit. There's no wards behind SKT, though, so no real way for Smep to get a flank. He's just sitting in the lane. He's waiting for SKT to overcommit to a fight knowing that Rumble isn't there. But you're still at that point where Fiora can duel everyone, so she can safely sit and stay even, at least with Marin, just clear the wave every single time, wait for something. I would want to see a ward from Kutagas behind this Baron, so there's a way for Smith to TP in and get a flank, and you can instantly try and go for Bang. SKT as yeah. well, kind of baiting the Baron out. They push On down the towards Baron. Dragon to make sure that Ku goes into it. SKT now approaching. Baron's going to be down to about 4,700 HP. That's the in from Wolf. Stops up three members. Slicing Maelstrom goes down, but it's not really hitting anybody. Or stunning, stunning the targets it needs. Faker is going to be able to take down Prey. The Baron still stands at 2,300 HP. Smab is forced to flash out of this one. This That's is the Baron they were waiting for, but SKT danced it out perfectly. The laser across. It's going to be going to Bengi. SKT gets Baron for a second game in a row, and now they're really going to be able to work the lanes. But what's the point in just teleporting your top laner straight into the Baron pit? Oh, that was one kill. Takes him down. It's going to be the fight. This is an easy kill for Faker here. Little bit of glitter. Glitter gets everywhere, and it takes down Kuro. 45 seconds on the clock. They're getting longer. Smeb may be able to pick up Dragon, but it, it's a consolation prize at this point. Also, when Smeb teleports inside that pit, I think they were trying to do it a little bit undetected, but it, Marin was able to get an equal oh, no way. that pit, which made it dangerous. Bengi Smite is up, so thanks for the help, Smeb. Thank you very much, says SKT. Ku what Tigers. A play. It doesn't look like they want to stop either. They see Smeb is low on mana. He's not going to have any potential to fight. Gorilla, not doing anything. But you can see how long it's been since they've been in each other's jungles. New wards finally being placed. Yeah. Nobody had deep vision before that whole fight. This obviously completely shuts down the split push here, but Ku Tigers simply got too greedy. They didn't want to wait any longer. They're like, let's just try and burst down the Baron, TP in here with all five guys, and just destroy the Baron as fast as possible before Marin shows up. But now you're just caught in here, so suddenly getting to the AD carry is almost impossible, and he's the guy you want to aim for if you look at what SKT is brought here on the board. So look at Bang, he's just sitting, shooting away all he wants, and they're caught 
five guys taking damage from Baron at the same time. Also, the way SKT engaged that fight with Wolf going in with the Unbreakable Will, the Baron was only hitting Ku, even though the team fight was taking pay place yeah. in the Baron pit. The dive that Smev tried to do outwardly maybe would have been best served to just kill frontline to backline. He tried to assassinate through the team of SKT, which is almost never going to work. Yeah. Impatience is the word I would use from Ku right there. It was supposed to be start Baron, four members from SKT yeah. move in, TP in behind him, like flash torn from the Shen onto Bang and try and destroy him as fast as possible, or maybe the Lulu. And then suddenly you have a good fight going for yourself instead of being caught in that pit. Just a little bit too greedy from Ku Tigers. It cost him in game one. It Costing him again here in game two. Smev not really respecting the members around him. He's just going for a little fight. Damage onto both Bengi and Wolf. Looks like they may want to commit here. They have good vision, but it's being cleared out. Double wards go down the ward war. Definitely won by SKT here inside Aku's jungle. And they're so split up. They can't really engage if they want to. A lot being done in defense. Smev actually puts himself in a spot oh. where he dies. That's a double kill for Bangi. They're not stopping. Bang jumps over the wall for another kill. And it looks like it's going to be an ace in the base. 22 to 13. When SKT takes over, they start to steamroll. And just like that, they still have Baron buff. And Marin's going to grab the minions. He actually still has Equalizer. He uses that to clear the minions. SKT, just like that, it's over. The game is open for anybody to take. Moments later, SKT wins a few fights, and it is all theirs for the taking. The first Nexus turret goes down here in game two. That's the second one. SK Telecom T1 are one win away from being your two-time world champions. Another game for SKT, where they punish you, they take the Baron, and they walk straight down and finish the game. Nine games so far at Worlds, SKT finished with the Baron buff on them. And Ku Tigers just had the whole setup for such a long time. And it gets so scary for Ku Tigers now. The this pressure. was the game where Marin and Bangi made the big mistake early in the game, and then made another mistake by not changing their play style. This breaks if you. If there was a game to it win does. or get back into the series, it was this one. And Ku needs to prevent being broken by SKT. We see such a big difference just in shot calling, though, between the teams. The way Ku Tigers are set up in the early game are like, oh, we're winning 1v1 top lane. Fiora is having a great start, a level above the rumble. Keep playing around. We have the Shen. We picked it early on because we want to split push. And then they keep joining in for fights with this teleport from Fiora. So she loses all her pressure in the mid game. Late game, they have that one opportunity where Rumble had no ulti. They set it up really well. And what do they do? They greet for the Baron. They rush in, trying to five man, just take it down as fast as possible. Ends up going completely wrong and they lose the game. They had so many openings. So many. <laughs> They, yes, exactly. I mentioned it in the beginning, you can beat SKT in every facet, but you have to be able to get on their mentality. You have to be able to break them down. And never once in that game did it look like they didn't want to engage. They didn't want to take another fight. They were always going for it. And so much of this just kind of speaks to the magic of SKT because we as observers and people watching, we get to see the whole map and we get to hindsight 2020 all these decisions. And this is why this it's true. so hard to be SKT. It's not like other teams are even close to being oh, look, on the level of turning things now. around because down in gold, still win. Usually yeah. up in gold, making the right decisions time and time and time again, one game away from being the first team to win two world championships. Absolutely crazy. We're going to go ahead and throw it over to our analyst desk to see what they make of that decisive SKT win. Thank you, Riv. Still undefeated for SKT there, although it looked... I thought looked, that was the game. That's the thing. It, it didn't look too. good there after those few early plays. How can you lose faith, Monty? But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, Monty? Yeah, but, you know, the thing is, is Jat said it. That was the game to win there for Ku. If things only get more terrifying from this point onward when you see yourself set up, literally set up within the first two and a half minutes of a game for victory, and then it slips away from you. Yeah, I mean, we kept talking about Ku's punish game and how they're waiting for all these mistakes to happen, and then they punish you so hard, and they're able to... The mistakes came too early in the game, maybe, and then they didn't know what to quite do with an early lead, because it looked like, while, yes, Marn and Bengi were making a lot of uh, early errors, and they were, you know, sort of tilting themselves, Smeb also, then, he kind of took that and went too aggressive. They were overreaching in a lot of places, and X SKT slowly built their lead back up from these small skirmishes across the map. Yeah, zeroing in on those first two instances in which Ku got their lead crep while I'm coming to you, because the team comps, the way that they were set up, we would have looked at SKTs and said, well, this is a Ku comp. 
you know, we're yeah. going to just stall out the game and wait for it. And Kuz Comp is one that is looking to snowball, set up that split push as Kobe mentioned. So those early kills that we got in those first two plays with the missteps from SKT, you would have thought, you know, well, is Ku going to be able to have the tools to do what SKT would have done with that lead? Yeah, they just changed the, the entire dynamic of the early game. And the way that happened there, exactly this phase right here, where just greed from SKT going way too deep here uh, for that initial dive, that put them behind so much. And then it, the game kind of turned around. So SKT was kind of playing a coup style. Now they were playing from behind. They were the ones baiting the dives, trying to punish the dives. And, and you would think a team that is so good at, uh, at the whole anti-dive game like who Tigers would actually prevent that later on and this this entire phase here where you see Marin flashing for the kill it just that never works out even if you like get that it's just too greedy. Yeah it's incredibly high risk and then and the dives just keep coming they punish the flashless state of Marin over and over and over again uh, just try and put him as much as possible and then Bengi decides to <laughs> oh, show how did I get here for some reason. <laughs> And uh, a new challenger approaches. Bangi, <laughs> Bangi really wants his repeat world championship, too. Yeah, they do. Guys. Pick, they, he picks up the one kill. Gorilla, unfortunately, taking I mean, the aggro. Here. Once he was under the tower, he did play that well. Like, he, he knew they were about to launch another auto attack, so he wanted to give them tower aggro with a double knockup. Like, trying to get out of these sticky situations, they did do their best, but. Just don't don't get in those situations. That's the one thing. You're like, why why get there? You know, such a smart team. But later on, SKD they did pick up the pace and they showed some fantastic macro play overall. Absolutely. It, this oh, is why on. we just point out there's so many threats on SKT. Even if you know jungler and top laner, the two biggest playmakers on your team, are having a terrible early game, they're still Faker and Bang there to carry you. Now before we get into those plays in which K SKT was able to claw their lead back, I do want to dissect the reason why Ku wasn't able to press their advantage as hard as they could. We saw till very late in the game, no dragons taken, and then the first one was taken by SKT. With Ku, with what Ku had at their disposal, you would have expected them to set up around that objective. I, I mean, it is a little hard because you're going up against Jarvan Rumble, which has one of the best ult combos in the game, so it can be still very dangerous to fight in the mid game, even if you're ahead around an objective like Dragon, as opposed to just split pushing. We're gonna see that replay right here. I mean, they just turn Hojin. Whimsy him right at the beginning. Yeah, but this is what I love so much about watching SKT play. Play any other team here, they work in 30 second intervals. They look at plays and they say, what can we get in the next 30 seconds? SKT, they plan a minute or a minute and a half ahead because as we see right here, many teams would go five man mid to try and not lose their tier two. SKT, they know they can defend four man, banks all the way in the bottom. But then usually teams will yield this red pressure and they still go for the fight here. They know Smep doesn't have flash from earlier, so they even force here the combo to make him stand on the ultimate from Rumble here. So really good plays by SKT. And meanwhile in the bot lane, Bang is still pushing. Uh, yeah, and if you keep up that macro pressure, it's obviously huge. Smep did a good job of reposting at the beginning of that fight the knockup from Bengi, but with the ultimate following right after, there still wasn't that much to be done. And uh, they really did punish when they saw them going into the top side and Bang's just sitting here free shooting at a turret. And that is one of their strengths. SKT, when they're down a member in a team fight or down a member on a map play, they will not yield the area, not the pressure. They will keep fighting it. They can win 4v5s if they have the preferential engage. And right there, they notice that, well, well, we can slow them down enough for Bang to, worst case, take two towers in the bot lane for free. And that was such a, a smart call because in the heat of the moment to make that call, there's so many teams that will just go five minutes and just panic. But but they know that that's a power spike, right, that they have uh, going into that particular phase of the game, especially in a choke against a Fiora like that. So it's not only it's not only knowing when like or how to take these fights, it's when to take these fights, even if they're behind. They, they say, OK, we still have higher power in this situation. And the speed at which they can dissect that yep. and know that is incredible. Yeah, Ku on your screen there probably discussing some of the communication failures that they had as a team. And I want to point towards that dragon dance that we saw, Kobe, because, again, they had uh, shown the pushing power, split pushing power of Fiora. They finally got her into a side lane against a, a, a TP-less Marin, and yet they chose to start a fight. Not only did they have the split pushing Fiora that got a lead in the early game, they also had a support Shen who has global. They also had a jungle Rek'Sai who has a global, another role that you don't usually have a global from. So they had all of these tools to try and push an early lead and do the style that SKT usually use where they pressure multiple points on the map at the same time and then pick you off, but they were unable to accomplish it. We also saw that in the Baron baits when they, they had that teleport discrepancy you talk about with Marin. They had teleport advantage. They spent so long trying with the Baron bait over and over, trying to work with the true side. And they finally pulled the trigger by actually teleporting him oh, into the Baron God. and losing yeah. it. That was just complete disaster. So this team really, they need to 
completely restart after this game because they've got to be a bit dejected after that and they just need to look at it as a fresh start. I mean, the, the most disappointing thing about that Baron dance was they had executed it so well for a few minutes in a row and then they just decide to commit to it instead of continuing to put that inhibitor pressure down or waiting for SKT because they definitely were dictating the tempo at that specific point in time. All right, well, with that win, SKT are just one win away from an undefeated world run and the Summoner's Cup, so don't go anywhere. We'll see if Koo can come back in game three in just a few minutes. Championship Finals. Oh, and he leveled one turret die. Bang, he definitely messed that up. Nice and nice. Wait, quickly. He's holding up the kill, though. He makes it. Grand challenge is down, so this is all about Smev's abilities. Gorilla goes in the middle of the fight with a nice flash. Wait, and back, no. Gorilla goes down. Here comes Kuro. Throws down the Chaos Storm. It's all over Wolf, though. Baker just completely turned this game. That's the end from Wolf. Stops up three members. Slicing Maelstrom goes down, but it's not really hitting anybody or stunning the targets it needs. That's a double kill for Bangy. They're not stopping. Bang jumps over the wall for another kill, and it looks like it's going to be an ace in the base. SK Telecom T1 are one win away from being your two-time world champions.